Hello, I'm Frank Jernigan, the developer of the website franco.com, and I'm also a knitwear designer who publishes in the magazine Cast On by the Knitting Guild Association. In the next issue of the Cast On magazine, which comes out in uh, early May, the summer issue, I'll be publishing a pattern for this scarf. I call the scarf a color fun scarf. The color fun scarf is named that because it's both colorful and it's fun to knit. If you uh, by any chance knit the shawl that I uh, published in the last issue, you may have found that a little challenging. Well, this is the opposite. This is one of the simplest color knit products that you can possibly make. Um, all of the instructions are straightforward. The rows are uh, or just short rows with German short row turns. I use German short row turns because they um, are just so easy to do and I'll have another video showing exactly how to do them in garter stitch because this entire fabric is made in garter stitch. Let me show you a little bit of the detail of this scarf. I have knitted it in uh, chroma worsted weight yarn from uh, knit picks and it's also wool of the Andes also from knit picks. I appreciated the chroma because it changes color at just the rate that I wanted it to change. If it changed too slowly then the yarn um, it, the, the gradi gradient doesn't really show it changes so gradually from one end to the other. If it changed too fast it would just look like it was striped in color and I didn't want to look that way either. So um, using these two colorways I knitted this scarf and one of the things I wanted to show about it is how the rows are in the scarf if you look in detail. They are not all straight across. The blue rows follow the curve of the wave form as I call it like that. Normally when a person knits in short rows you, you knit across and back and across and back and across and back and that's how the waveform is created and then you fill in the gap by knitting across to the waveform and back short row then longer and then longer and longer and that makes straight rows. But I discovered that if you invert the order of those rows and do the do the long row first all the way up to here and then shorten them as if you were doing them in the reverse order of, of just filling the space it creates this lovely pattern of uh, knit fabric that follows the, the, the pattern instead of just being across it. So that's what I wanted to show you about the scarf. The other thing I want to talk about is the pattern itself because uh, I have created a new way of writing color, um, short row color work patterns that I think is uh, more concise, easier to read, and easier to knit. I made two changes. The first problem I see with most short row patterns if they uh, follow the traditional method they would get that every line would be knit X number of stitches, turn, knit X number of stitches, turn, knit X number of stitches, turn, and so forth. The only thing that's changing from line to line is the number of stitches to knit. So why do we need all that extra verbiage? Um, however, the other problem is if, you, if an instruction says knit 50 stitches, you've got to count all 50 stitches, or at least count till you think you're done and then check the count, and it's tedious. But I've instituted a method of putting a marker every 10 stitches and numbering the stitches, and then I can say knit to stitch number 12. You don't have to count 12 stitches if you're starting at stitch number 1. You just start knitting, and when you pass the first marker, you go two stitches past it. The instructions actually look like this. The first row, you are told 
to cast on stitches and place a counter marker every 10 stitches. So the first row you knit is going to be a wrong side row. So this number represents the wrong side row and says knit to stitch number 48. You, there were 52, so you're going to knit at 52, 51, 50, 49, 48. You're going to knit five stitches. Then you turn and you knit back to 52. The word turn here means do a normal turn, not a short row turn. Every place that that doesn't appear, you do a German short row turn after each of the two numbers. So there, there are other instructions that look like this. where you start at stitch 24 and on the right side you knit to stitch number 38 you turn the work with a German short row turn you knit to stitch number 25 German short row turn knit to 39 German short row turn and so forth you don't have to count how many stitches to knit because you've marked every 10 stitches and you know where stitch number 26 is it's either four stitches less than stitch number 30 or it's six stitches more than stitch number 20 which is marked. So that is the simplified method of, of documenting how to knit short row color work which I think works really well. If you knitted the shawl that was published earlier uh, in the last issue of Cast On Magazine uh, you, would ha well, you would know that there were lots of um, increases and decreases to account for the diagonal stitches. It turns out that this shawl doesn't need that and that's what makes it so simple to knit. It's just knitted back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. You just have to keep track of which yarn you're using and which way to knit, uh, I mean, and, and how far to knit it, what stitch number to knit it to. So it's all knit. Um, there, the, all you have to do is learn how to do a German short row turn and that is very simple especially in garter stitch. There is one place in the instructions that says oh these stitches you might want to purl and that's just simply because it improves the look of a certain one line segment about this long if you purl them instead of knit them but if you didn't purl them it would be fine to knit them anyway. It, it, isn't, a, it isn't a huge error it just makes it look a little bit different. Um, so that's all there is to say I think and I just hope you enjoy the color fun scarf and um, if you have any questions you can always write me. Um, my email is available at franco.com. <laughs>